Hi guys, it's from Sebastian here again. As you all know, whatever video I drops comes with a new trick. Okay, so this time we are going to be learning how to create this circle here. We are going to be learning how to create this uh, backdrop and this background here also. We are going to be learning how to compose this design perfectly well to pop. And it's kind of complicated but just stay right there. We are going to unravel everything here in Pizzle Lab. Okay, without further ado, let's get started. I wipe up this guy and get a blank page now. So I have a blank page now. So I'll go over to my base here with this third interface. Once I'm on this third interface, I have my base here. In case you are not, probably you have a ship. This is the ship I just brought in now. So I click good. So let's say you have a ship covering this background and is not locked so once you're on this interface you won't see the bezier too because you'll be seeing the functions for this shape you get you are seeing the functions to work on this shape and not on the background so you have to lock the shape in case you have a shape you lock it so that once you touch you are now touching the background then you have your bezier okay note so then we have our background now we have our bezier so we we'll click on the bezier it brings out the Bezier tool. This is whatever. This is the first thing you see whenever you cl click your bezier. So I have my bezier now. What's this? I'll switch over to this menu so I can have handles to work on them. Then I will close with this other menu. This other middle menu here is is turned five now because it's closed. Once it's open, let me open it. You see, it's four now. So you close with this this other after this first one, this second uh, key here. So you click on it and it's closed, and the button turns five because once it turns five, you have one for you to add buttons, which is this one now, which is used to add buttons. But if it's open, once it's open, you have only four because you can add buttons with just tapping on them. It's more complicated. You can try watching my video on how to use Bezier to understand in depth on how to use this Bezier. Okay, so I'm gonna remove all these dots. Dots. I'm gonna remove all of them. So I'll close now, and then let's work on this. So I need more buttons to create what I uh, the curve I'm in need of. So I'll add from here. I'll add buttons one, two, four. I have four buttons now. So, for you to avoid having some kind of um, edge in curves in Pizzle Lab, make sure you keep your lines in straight, like your handles in straight line, like this one now. They should be at angle 90, at uh, angle 180 to each other. For those that didn't study physics, I mean, they should be, this one should be like straight to this one. It shouldn't be curved. That's what I mean. For those that are not good at mathematics. Okay, so I have I almost have what I'm looking for now. So I'll add another button. Okay, okay, okay. So we we'll have what we are looking for now. So now it's time for us to fill. We are gonna fill with a gradient, okay? So we'll go over to this gradient here and look at the gradient I created. So in case you don't know how to create this gradient, it's just simple. You scroll over. I'm sure once you open your gradient, you have this default gradient here. So let's use this default gradient. You click on it. Once you have, you click on it, you get a gradient. Then use this plus button here. Once you click on this plus button, it brings this what you are gonna see. In this now. All these things are called color placeholder. This one and this one. You can add more if you want with this plus button, and you have another one. Let me just remove it. So we touch on each anywhere you want to work on. So we want to change this black now to brown. We touch on this black one now. Then we we'll go over to this color um stuff here. Look at it. This color key here at the bottom, the last button. So you click on it. Then this is transparency. This is whitening, and this is darkening. Okay. So then we increase the transparency because I reduced it. I will shift this uh this color. This is the color we. So I want to get a brown color. So I'll get something, place my stuff here. Move this guy a little, please push this guy up a little and push the guy. I'm trying to get a brown color. So I have a brown color here. So this one is darker than this one from what I created. So a white color should be here. You can move them if you want to change. You can just slide them through. Let me keep this guy here. And this guy is going to be... A little further than the other one 
So we'll move this guy close, something like this. Okay, and we are good. Let's move a little. So, so and we are good now. We've created this. So you just follow the steps and create yours. Once you are done, you you click this OK below here, and you get your color. So we don't need this stroke now. We we'll need it once I copy and I show you guys. So we reduce. Look at the stroke width here. Use it to increase the width and use it to reduce it. So I'll reduce the width to zero. So I don't have a stroke width and I click good now. So this is what I have. I'll adjust this guy to fit in. So something like this and rotate we'll it a little. So this is what I need now. So I have something like this. I'll place it perfectly well. So I'll copy this guy again. So look at what I will do. Bringing this one to the front. Look at what I will do now. I'll go. I'll click this layer now. Then lock this first one. Then I'll work on this second one at the back now. Look at what I will do to this second one. I'll go over to this edit we used in editing this. This is edit now. It's the menu we used in editing this shape before. So I'll click on it now. Then I will change the main color, the few color, instead of making it a gradient. You know the few color was gradient we worked on before. So the few color this time around, we're gonna change it to a gradient. I think I just opened a bezier. So let me, let me just cancel and go over to what I have here. So I'll go over to edit now. So the few color is a gradient which we created, but this time around we are gonna make it a solid color. So we are gonna use a solid color from here. So this is a solid brown color. So I have a solid brown color now. Then the stroke is gonna be a gradient. You get the stroke. This is the few is the solid color. So the stroke is a gradient. So I'll move from color here, which is the color um, menu for color. So I'll move over to this gradient menu and change the stroke to gradient. But I reduce the stroke width to zero. So after changing the color to gradient, look at it, gradient, this one. So I'll increase the stroke width this time to 34 and i have a huge stroke so i'll click good now so you see the effect the kind of effect i created with this guy you see this one was at the back and this one is at the front now so the one at the back will have a few uh color and a stroke of gradient then the one at the front you just won't touch it you leave it as it was so we'll keep here so this is how we got this there are other ways you can do this but this is the simplest way okay so i will lock this tool now so it's time for me to get a shift I click this plus button here and look at shape here that shape here so i clicked on it so it brought a square this square default square shape is what is gonna give you one whenever you press that stuff that shape okay so you go over to this this stuff here this menu here you click on it it brings up other shapes which you can work with so i will use circle this time so i'll keep it here and then i'll click good so i'll go back to shadow menu and add a shadow to it so this is the shadow menu now so i'll add a shadow to it so this is a shadow then i told you guys i do warn you guys about it you don't use hard shadows this is the default shadow you're gonna get is a hard shadow so you don't work with hard shadows hard shadows will make your design not look professional so use soft shadows soft shadows i mean by reducing the opacity of the black of the shadow this is the shadow now it has a blur reduce of 10 so first you increase the blur reduce to 15 or 20 okay then use this plus button now you reduce the opacity the opacity of the black color somewhere here then you click good and you see you have a light a soft shadow so let's make it more soft okay so we are good now then you can offset it a little probably offset of x side offset of six offset of six an offset of six here also so we are good now so i will copy this guy again now i'll reduce this shadow i'll remove the shadow in it so the shadow is gone so i'll get a shape again from this shape here so i'll get a shape here so i have this uh more like a line shape but it's a bold line so i'll change the color to black I have a black now so i'll copy this guy copy this guy then rotate it and 90 degrees so it turns horizontal so i have 90 degrees so it's now horizontal now so there but but the issue there there is no way i will adjust this thing or move this or start doing all this stuff to get it perfectly well so the way out there is using relative position that's one wonderful tool i use a lot in puzzle lab so we'll make relative first here and make relative first this one horizontal first vertical and second vertical then you click the lines and do the same thing to them so you click this second one again and do the same thing to it 
so everything is perfectly aligned there's no need for you to start moving whatever sort or any stuff so we'll then match these guys the three of them this circle and those these lines so we'll match them with this second this third menu here so we'll click merge we'll click good and we are done merging it now so we erase this color this black color once you click this erase, the first thing is going to erase is white, okay? So you have to click this thing that looks like a, more like a picker or a soccer. To use it to suck the color you want to remove. So once you click on it, you have a handle in your screen, which you can move over to whatever color you want to erase. So since I'm on this shape, I can't erase this brown because I'm not on the brown shape. Assuming I touch the shape and click that and I can erase this brown. Since it's on this one I am now, this is only the color I can erase, this black or white. So I'll move to black and click good. Erases the black so I can increase the tolerance. Probably 15. Or you can just leave it if it has erased everything you need properly. You just leave it. So I'll click OK then. Then I'll crop. I'll crop one of these out. And I have one one of those now. So I'll resize, I will increase the increase it more. So this is good now. So I'll get a shape, then resize and make it invisible. Then merge it with this one again. Why I'm making it big whenever I want to merge is because if it's big, it's big already, it adds enough quality. But once it's small, you merge it. If you increase it, it will lose quality. So just know that you made it big enough. So at the size that you know that there's no way you can make it that big, more than that big, okay? So make it big before merging. So that once you merge, if you reduce the size, it will, it will gain quality instead of losing. Okay, so we'll merge the two. Let's check whether it's okay, it's, it's invisible. So we'll merge it. So we'll now have this shape now. So then we'll color the shape to see what to see what we are doing. So we'll change the color to probably just let's just use red for the main time. So then I'll click good. And then I'll copy this guy again. Rotate somewhere here. So I see that this guy is big now. So I'll delete this one and then resize. Resize the more. So I'll copy again. Rotate it. Place it somewhere here and see what it looks like. Okay, I think this is good now. So I'll copy this one again and then rotate. Rotate and then now copy again and then rotate and then place it here. Okay, so I think I have a good arrangement now. So I will now use my keys because this time I can't use my hand to get it perfectly well. So I have to use this position to here in this uh, third interface for shape. So I use this position to, to adjust these guys really well so they can fit in. So this one is good now so once you are designing make sure you make everything precise okay mine might not be precise because it's a video and i'm trying to save time once you are designing make sure you do precision make sure you you are precise in whatever you are doing don't just manage or say let me just leave it no don't be that type of designer okay we are good now okay so then i will start changing and start adding images to it now so I'll go over to texture and note this whenever you're using an irregular shape whenever you're using an irregular shape like the shape now we created we use square dimensions for whatever image you're trying to add let me show you what I mean so let's say I want to add this first image of this hair here so it's here now you see the default dimension is giving me is more like this is a TikTok dimension for TikTok videos but look at square dimension up here you click on it it changes it to square you see this thing now is square this play, place these buttons are covering is square so you use it to work whenever you're using irregular shapes okay so that to avoid uh, double image just use square it's the perfect dimension that suits whatever you are, look, you are doing so I'll click good now you see it won't show I'll click good now. It won't show because this red is a color. I own the color, um, this color here. I own it, so I'm offing it now. Let me show you what I did. This is a color now. If in case it's on, whenever you add the texture, you will not see the texture because the color is covering the texture. Okay, it supersedes the texture. But whenever you want to add the texture, don't own this color here. This is a color menu in the shape. 
you don't on it whenever you want to add texture because it will cover up the texture and you won't see it so I have offed it now so I will keep when I add other ones I will still off them or probably will just off it before adding it's still the same thing so we'll click on the texture now it's taking us to the gallery so this is the next image I'll click on it is here look at the dimension it has I'll still use square again but this time around you see this image is facing up but that my shape was turning out was turning down so I'll have to flip this guy up not like this flip it up here like this something like this and then resize to get something facing up so you see what I have is facing up now assuming I didn't do what I did the image will be facing down because this is the main uh, uh, arrangement of the shape but I, try, I, I turned it down that is why it's like this so I flipped it again okay so I'll add texture to this this is the other image here so I'll click on it and then I'll use square dimension for it so I'll get the hair now and click good it's here now so I'll, I'll, I'll off the color so it's, it's gonna show so I off the color now it's showing okay so guys I'll still go over to texture here to add the other image so I'll click and this is my color so this is the other image I used so I'll click on it this is it here so it brings it up for me and I'm gonna use the same square dimension here which is up here so then this is more like a um, a placeholder it's more like a picker that takes the place you want to display and leave the rest okay so it's more like a clipping max so I will just I want to pick the hair only so that I'll click good below here so it's there now I'll click good up here then this color is still covering it so off it from color here so we have the image is now displaying so then we'll get our other shape this is square as default shape we change to circle and then i click good so i'll go to this layer looking looking at this arrangement you see that this circle is looking as if it's really big compared to the images we've placed so we can resize the circle a little bit something like this is good so we'll move our position to and move the circles so we are good now so then this here should be at the middle here so we we'll just resize here and keep and then we'll add a add texture to it add an image from texture so this is the image that was in the middle here so this is it here I'll use square dimension again and I'll resize to get the image clear and click good okay so it's showing now then I want to teach you guys something if you want to add stroke to this now what will happen I've enabled this stroke I'll on it now so it's, 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 it was on so I've offed it so let me on it again so let me just increase the stroke you see what is is, is, look, is looking like it's not looking like a perfect circle okay but you can get achieve this now by not using stroke you just off the stroke then you copy this image again copy this shape and the image together then remove the image from texture here you remove the image so that you have only white then you take this one at the back then you resize it and adjust it it suits suit so i'm resizing it now then i'm using position move move to it, this one to move So you see i have a good arrangement now so i will lock these guys and i'm done with that so it's time for us to bring our girl image now so we'll click plus from gallery okay guys so this is the gear we use so i'll click on the gear it brings it up for me so no need to change dimension i'll just click good then increase and Reduce. so i think this guy is, is kind of these guys are really close so i will just move all of them at the same time watch what i'll do i'll click first one second third i'll click 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 i'll click all the stuff i want to move except the gear then i'll use this second button apart from this delete one and this one now i'll use the second one 
so i'll click on it with all these things you can rotate you can scale and you can lock all these stuff at the same time so i want to use this position to which is used to move it is using moving so i'll use it to move everything there at once so i think we are good now so the girl can have enough space for her so then i work on the image to increase the contrast a little and the saturation and those so i have saturation of two i reduce brightness brightness reduction of around six and i increase the contrast contrast of around five and this is it we are good now so i will lock it then i will get if you can look closely to the first design there was a texture in the background adding texture in your background gives your design more art aesthetics so we'll add that texture now to the background so guys here is the texture i got it from the shoe this background here so then i will use square a mention then i just to get the texture from here don't bother about all the resources i'm definitely gonna send you guys the whole resources on the description link they're gonna be there definitely okay so i'll take this guy at the back Okay, then it's now at the back so i will use eraser that is something i do to background i used to erase it a little bit so then i will reduce the amount of reduction probably three or just four so and we are good now so then i will lock the background so i don't mistakenly shift it now i get my text from plus button here so you have text up here so i click on it then i will adjust with these handles you can use these handles to adjust and you can use this one below to rotate so I'll just learn. I will double tap on this now. Start typing whatever I want to type. So B, B, so what B is natural, B is natural. B is natural. is natural so then i'll change the font from this other interface here this second one below here so i'll change the font from here so i'll click the here and then go over to my font here i recently used the font i'm gonna show you you guys the font also so look at it johnson bold johnson bold so then i will re reduce the spacing between the fonts is is kind of much line spacing this is vertical line spacing so reduce it probably 35 so resize so i have what i'm looking for now so from this i resized it and it's looking as if it's really really clustered so we use 30 and then we change the color to brown we are not going to use a gradient for it so i have a brown color here which i can use let me scroll this is brown here so then we'll get that we'll copy this test now then we'll double tap on it we treat we treat so I'll resize this guy and then change the color to black So I have my black color. So I have this gear is more like it's covering space for me. So I can just unlock it and bring it down, down, and uh, we are good now. So we treat will be below. Okay, so guys, we'll copy this guy here, copy it, and then we'll double tap on it. So we'll type on the other text. type on the other says which says we treat okay probably i have a test here which i copied which i can paste here it says we treat style and hair so i'll click good now so you see the effect i did on this b natural is now showing on this guy so you go over to this line space in here you see this line space in this menu you click on it 
then i told you guys about this thing here whatever you do and you don't like you want to get whatever you did back you don't know just click on this refresh it gets everything back to normal then you should note something johnson board we used is not a paragraph font so we are going to change font this time around we are going to change to monsterat so we'll go to monsterat so we'll take monsterat semi bold medium and we might also use regular Okay, so I'm just clicking on them so that they will appear on my recent whenever I go there. So I'll switch to both and click good now. So then I'll resize this guy now to 16 or 14. So it's on 14 now. So I'll change my font to medium. So I have my medium font now. So then I'll change the color to brown here, which is this brown here. This is the darker brown. I used this other brown for the background and I didn't use it for the paragraph because I want the paragraph to be seen well. Okay, you can manipulate colors like this, increase the uh, darkness a little, darken the color a little so that it will be seen more than the paragraph. It's still in the color line, so it doesn't, it still doesn't, um, it still doesn't affect anything. Okay, okay so we, here is it. We have our treat now. What they are treating. So then I think the B nature is up, so we'll bring it down, bring everything down. With this same pattern we did to move this guy, we are using the same pattern to mark everything and move. Okay then, we'll get our shape now. Circle shape. Then we'll add gradient to it. We'll fill it with this gradient here. So then I'll place it here so then I'll move I'll move it so I'll keep this guy here and move move and move and move and move so this guy is okay so I'll copy this Montserrat font I'm trying to move it so I'll copy the Montserrat font now then double tap on the font so I have my cone now cone now so the cone now is gonna be a bold font definitely so that I'm gonna see so that the viewers or target audience can see it's more like a call to action so you can use semi bold or a bold font for them this is Monserrat board here so we we'll have Monserrat board and we we'll change the color to white so we we'll have a white color now so we we'll resize and then we we'll have it placed really well okay so we are gonna use middle alignment for this So we use middle alignment now so most of the times once you add alignment it's going to move most of the times you, you will see what you move to be moving so it's now balanced now so we we'll use our base here you see from the other one it looks as if there's an arrow showing where to see the contact so we'll get that arrow with our base here now again so we'll move over to this middle one close it then we'll work with the handles now So we'll work with the handles now. So Okay, we have this now so then we'll change to the, the same gradient color so it's not noticeable we we'll remove the stroke we we'll reduce the stroke width here so i reduce it to zero then i'll click good name so i'll resize this guy now to fit in and then keep him here at the back of this shape this is my layer here I'll click this layer put this guy at the back of this circle so then click the layer again so it goes off then i'll resize and rotate 
So even though you didn't you didn't get what you the position you want, whatever base or any shape you created, you can rotate them to still give you what you want. Okay, so we have it now. So then we we'll get the text, which is the number. So we we'll copy from core now. We we'll copy it. So I'll double, double tap on this call now. So I will just paste my number from my number here. I've copied. So this is it, my number. So then let me space it. So then I'll resize this guy. Then keep it below here. So keep okay. So guys, like I usually say, add your own social media. There's no need for me to add my own social media. So for us to create the logo, we get a shape here. So or a size. Add your own social media below. So we resize, then we use gradient here. Then we move it. So we resize now. And this is our logo icon here. So we are trying to adjust it to fit well. Then we'll get the text here. And write the same B is natural, but this time around it's not gonna be your capital letter. B is naturals. And then we we'll change the font to a font here which I used for the logo. I'm gonna show you guys all this font. So look at it. Bell gate here. So I will change the color to white. But I'm not gonna change all of them. So I'll just first of all change the color to this um dark. Uh, coffee or chocolate color then look at what i'll do you see in this menu here this thing below that is more like covering the b naturals here that was written tiny here now that i'm adjusting so i will adjust this thing to cover only the bees and leave the naturals now so since it's covered it now then i will change the color now this color will only affect the place i covered it won't affect the other part of the natural uh, naturals it only affect the bees so i have now two colors in one letter with this technique now so i'll click good and then I'll place here and then I'll resize it. So I'll move this one a little. And then I'll move the other shape. Okay, guys. So guys, this is it. Go try it out. Put in your social media and uh, don't forget to hit the subscription button if you enjoyed this video. And don't forget to share as you're not the only one to benefit from this awesome video. Okay, so guys, thanks for watching and uh, see you guys next Wednesday. And don't forget, keep creating.